Welcome to part one of our series on building a Zelda-like game in Phaser 3. In this video, we'll be setting up our project, getting all the necessary tools in place, and making sure everything is ready to go. Check out the playlist link in the description for the full series. Alright, let's jump in and get everything set up. In this part, we'll make sure you have everything you need to build an amazing game using Phaser 3 and TypeScript. We'll walk through setting up your development environment, downloading your essential assets, and ensuring your project is ready to run smoothly. Let's get started. Step 1. Downloading your project files and assets. We've prepared a basic project structure to kickstart your development journey. This includes some initial files to help set up Phaser and manage your game logic. You'll also need to download the game assets, which includes our sprite sheets, our maps, and all the assets we'll be using in our game. These will all be included in the assets folder as part of the basic project. So the basic project template can be found over on GitHub on the official repository for this course. In the description of this video, there's going to be two links. One will be to this page here, and the second one will be to a direct download uh, to the source folder. If you go ahead and download that source folder now and extract it, you should see the following file contents. So inside the basic project structure, we should have everything we need to set up and run our game locally. In the public folder, this is going to have all of our assets for our game, and so this will be our JSON files, our custom fonts, our images, our sprite sheets, and everything else. Besides that, the rest of this is the boilerplate for our Phaser 3 uh, project template. If you can go ahead and open up this project in your ID of choice, for this course I'll be using VS Code. So before we set up and run our project locally, I'm going to quickly go over the project structure. Inside the basic project template, there's going to be this VS Code folder here. This just has some settings uh, for VS Code, so if you're using a different IDE, you can remove that folder. Our config folder has some settings for ESLint and for Vite, which is where our dev server will be running locally uh, for our project. The no modules folder will be generated after we install our project dependencies, and our public folder is going to have all of our public facing assets that we'll be using in our game. Our source folder is going to have all of our TypeScript code that will be used for our phaser game. Then we have our index.html, this will be our entry point for our web application. This will point to our main.ts file, which will be the entry point for our game. Then we have our package.json file. This has all of our project dependencies that we need, as well as some useful scripts for starting our project locally. The tsconfig.json and our vite.config.js file are configuration files uh, for TypeScript and vite. Finally, we have our project task to-do list, which will list out all the steps we need to create our game. Then, in our source folder, if we open up main.ts, this is where we create our Phaser 3 game instance. First, we create our Phaser 3 game configuration, we're targeting WebGL, and we have our arcade physics enabled. We then create our Phaser 3 game instance, and we add in our scenes that we'll be using for our game. Into our scenes folder, our scenes keys just has the scene keys we'll be using in our project, and these are just the keys that we provide when we create our scene instance. In our preload scene file, this is where we create our preload scene, and this will be used for loading in all the assets that we need for our game, which transitions to our game scene, and then inside our game scene, we're just creating a basic text game object and adding that to our scene. Finally, under our common folder, this will just have some common code that we'll be using throughout our project. Our assets.ts file, this will have our asset keys and our animation keys. That way we can reference these from the same location throughout our code base. Our types.ts file will have our common types that we'll be using for our game. And then finally under utils, this will have some common utility functions uh, that we'll be using in our project. And we'll cover these once we add them in our code. Step 2. Setting up the development environment. To set up and run our game locally, we need to install our project dependencies. To do this, we'll navigate to our terminal and now we need to run our command for installing our dependencies. And so I'm gonna do pnpm install. So I'll be using the pnpm uh, package manager for installing my dependencies, but you can also run the same command using npm. To do that, you just wanna do npm install, and that's gonna go into our package.json file and install our dependencies. Step three, running the project locally. Now that we've installed our dependencies, we should be able to start our local web server and verify our game's working properly. To do this, I'm gonna do pnpm, and I'm gonna use the start script from our package.json. You can also start this with npm, and you can do npm run start, and that should start your local dev server. If we open up our browser and go to localhost 3000, we should see our game running in the browser. So in your browser, you should see a black screen with the text game scene, and if we open up our developer tools and go into our console, we should see that our phaser banner is running and currently we're using phaser 3.87. And to make sure our local devs are working properly, let's come over to our code. If we go into our source folder, let's go under scenes, let's go into our game scene. I'm just going to change our text to say game scene 2 and this should verify that our hot reload is working and we should see that our scene is now updated. Next on our task list, we need to add our assets to our project. Currently our project template has this all handled for us, but how this works is in our preload scene, we're loading in a pack file. This pack file is a JSON file that points to all the other assets we'll be using in our game. 
So if we go to our assets and we go into our data folder, we'll see we have this assets.json. Inside here, we have paths to our other folders where our other assets are located. And then under files, this will be an array of objects of our different file types we'll be loading in phaser. So this object has information of what type of file it is, as well as the key we'll be using to reference that asset from our cache. Then we have our URL of where the asset is located, and then any other configuration that's needed to load that file type. So we'll see for our fonts, we provide things like the format of our font and we want to load versus if we load in a file like our image, we just need to provide our key and our URL. And if we th load in things like a sprite sheet, then we provide our frame configuration for that sprite sheet. So if we want to add new assets to our game, we need to add those to this assets.json file here and point it to the relevant asset under our public assets folder. As long as we do that, they'll be dynamically loaded inside our preload scene. Step four, installing tiled. For level design, we'll be using Tiled, a flexible level editor that integrates seamlessly with Phaser. To follow along, download and install Tiled from their official website. I've included a link in the video description to make it easy. Once you've installed Tiled, you'll be ready to create and edit game levels like a pro. For the time being, we won't be doing anything else with Tiled, and we'll get to this later in our course. That's it for this part of the series. If you found this helpful, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you're following along, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. If you have any questions or want to share your progress, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.